and some of the best views in Lakeland. Check, I wasn't hallucinating. First weighing rides of the day. Because there are a couple of drop-offs. Quest for hydration. <laughs> I can barely look at this. It might be reboiling. <laughs> we have a little skull together on the top of Great Gable. Well worth stopping and trying to see whether you can spot it too. Tea drinkers may regard that as a tea fail. Ooh, I didn't fall. Bye. Hello. Hi. This is Kerry. And this is Kat. And we, we are tea, tea in Valhalla. Today we are going up for Wayne Rights. We are actually heading towards Great Gable. We'll be going over Grey Knots, Brandreth, Green Gable and Great Gable. And there's a little bit of scrambling, isn't there, up Great Gable? There is, um, from the Windy Pass um, in up. Between so green. in between Green and Grey. Which should be great. That'll be a, a It'll bit It'll be fun. great. <laughs> we've, been, we've done this walk before but we didn't get um, such lovely conditions. So we thought we'd bring it back and share it with you today. We started at the awesome Honister slate mine. Yep. Um, it's actually the only working slate mine in England um, currently. Yep, we paid five pound for all day parking. Yeah. Parked in, in a safe location there. There is free parking available a bit down further the road down a bit. the Honister Pass, which we drove in through this morning. And that was pretty incredible. That was very cool. And our walk today, it's straight into oh, a Oh, look at this. Oh. All sorts of activities and things you can book and do from the slate mine. Extreme adrenaline uh, seekers and I know it gets used for hen parties and stag do's and things as well. We go down in the caves, it's all pretty cool. It's a massive mining works, there's lots to see. Honister slate mine, look at it, quite extensive. All of this, all up here, all of this mountain here, all up there. I mean, that really is extensive. It's actually been mined in different ways since the Roman times. In the 18th century, it started to be mined exclusively for the quite prized Westmoreland Green Slate. Um, and they still sell that in the shop today. Anyway, still following this quite well-defined stone path, following that fence, and we'll keep going up and up until Kerry's knackered. Yeah, it is a circular loop we're doing today. So you will see lots of different sites along the way. We're gonna bring you back via a smuggler's route. We'll tell you more about that later on too. It's a really interesting walk, one of my favorites. As you come up, it does tend to get a little bit more scrabbly, but it isn't difficult. It may be a little bit more difficult if it was uh, bad weather, uh, but not too bad. Again, hogging the fence line. Make sure you don't get snagged up on the fence and the sheep are keeping a close eye on you anyway. So we are nestled now within the mountain. Can't see the slate mine anymore. We sort of turned a bit of a corner, uh, but you do just keep following um, the fence line with it on your right as you're ascending. You can see it's right up there as well. For now, you will cross later on when we get to the top. I will show that because the climb up is quite steep, isn't it? Get your legs going. Yeah. Quickly. But actually you start from about 300 meters, don't you? Yes. So actually you cut off a few hundred meters just by parking at the slate mine, which is lovely. It's our last day here, full day here. So it's our last climbing day. Still looking for the style on our way to Grey Knots. We can turn around, cattle turn around slowly now, I'm sure, but you can see how much elevation we've gained and the stunning views on offer. So down near that road. Ooh. It's safe to say we've warmed up. It's very, very <laughs> warm today. So we've reached the style. I was gonna say at the bottom, the last time we were here, it was like a ghost style. It's a style with no fence, yeah. Swapping so sides. It, that's right, and you still follow the fence for a little bit, but you, then you have it on your left as you're ascending. Yeah. We've got the Factor 50 on. So three liters of water, two tonic waters, and two cups of tea each as well in our quest for hydration.
Wow. The silence is absolutely delightful. <sighs> there she blows. Ah, it's our first glimpse at the beautiful Great Gable. Look at it. But known as the Pyramid of the Lake District, as you're coming at it from the Wazdale in particular, and I guess it's where its name originates from, it is triangular in its- Yeah, like it's a gable of, end. Like a gable end, yes. like a pyramid. From a lot of the lakes, you see it as the double-breasted yes. green and Great Gable. Yeah. But from Wazdale in particular, it's got its triangular. Yeah. So from here, you can see the obvious outcrop at the top of Grey Knot. But if it is a bad day and you're not too sure, get to the end of this fencing. Make sure you keep this little wet area on your left-hand side as you're ascending. And you can't really go too far wrong because it's the only great big lump <laughs> in the area. But it's quite obvious on a fine day. Look at it. It's obvious and someone's put a nice little carn right on top, which is really sweet and always a little welcome sight. And Grey Knots might be our uh, first tea stop slash sandwich stop of the day as well. There'll be all sorts of tarns and mountainous treats along this path as well. So well worth staying with us. So Grey Knots is really quite interesting. It's actually the site of a few different graphite mines and some of it is known to be the best graphite in the world. In fact, it was so important that they started calling it black lead around here or wad. It became so expensive that they started smuggling it. And there was a quite a famous Victorian female smuggler called Black Sal. And unfortunately, when she was hiding it in one of her caves, she was actually hunted down and killed by the owner's dogs, uh, you know, of the caves. Quite, quite a sad story, but uh, it goes to show how important and expensive the graphite was here. At 697 meters, this is grey knot. Such an amazing feeling. Yeah. Not a high point of the day by any stretch of the imagination, but to bag the first summit of the day is always a special feeling. I think so, yeah. Wow. You can see our journey, our, our soon to be journey stretching out. Yeah, the path ahead. <laughs> and to take in these views the last time we were here we were encased in thick fog so we couldn't see any of this no. cat's going to give you a 360 now have a look yeah. bust out the teas and the sandwiches and we'll bring you back when we're on the move in a minute I just said to Kat, as we were trying to find somewhere to park our bums for our tea stop, I said, this little uh, wane right here reminds me a bit of Dartmoor. And she pointed out that it is igneous rock. So it is- I'm excited that did Kerry, because I thought, oh my God, he's learning his environment. It, it, it should, yeah, absolutely. I'm not a quick learner. It does take a while for things to settle in with me, so. Yeah, a lot of this is a bit of an uplift of igneous rock, but, um, around this little area, I think most of it is something called tuff, right. which is a bit of a blanket term, but it's pretty much volcanic ash. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of different types of igneous rock over here. Yeah. I'm not going to just blanket it, but a lot of it is tough. Some tea drinkers may regard that as a tea fail. The tea was too hot. So we, we scoffed a sandwich, munched on a brownie, and now we're heading on towards... Brandreth. This path now, because it's quite um, marshy, and it's a little bit grassy, it's yep. not very well defined. Okay. So you just have to try your best to keep all the tarns on your left-hand side and just follow straight uphill if you can. Okay. Because it's almost a dead line. Clear day like this, you can see where the, the grass has been flattened. Yeah. But I think on a poor on day. On a misty day, and having yeah. done this in the mist and the rain and the wind a few moons ago, we can vouch for that. It is a much harder route to negotiate than it looks today. Even that being said, being clear today, we have bought our OS map, oh God, yeah. compass, it's in the back of Cat's oh, pack always, actually. Always. Just in case, just in case, you know. You, Something you, comes in, weather changes, yeah. cloud comes in. You might just start feeling a little bit like unsteady or whatever, and you just want a bit of assurance. Yeah. I think, I think you should always have a map really, but. Or well, you might want to change your route. You might suddenly think, oh, where, that's true. where the heck does that path go? Yeah. As we head towards this gate and up to our second Wainwright of the day. And that's what you're heading up to, if you can actually see it in your uh, thing. Stylish. Negotiate your way through the boulder field, the old broken sort of fence border markers, past all the 
new, soon to be installed wooden fences, he says. I'm sure they were here four years ago. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow, indeed. Boop. Boop. At 715 meters, this is Brand Drift. Our second Wainwright of the day. Lovely, lovely. Spectacular, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a Thursday morning, beautiful day, middle of June. And we haven't seen a single soul yet. No, it couldn't be more fabulous. Yeah. So actually, when we come down, Gabe, we have to come down that quite sort of sharp looking edge. You can just see a line of white that will actually be our path on the way back the smugglers path that's the start of the smugglers path, yeah i'll tell it? you about it when we're there obviously but... inching ever closer to green gable now and then on to the monster that is great gable yeah you know, it's so good to see be able to see everything because we slogged up here in absolute torrential rain and fog and didn't see a single thing so this is amazing it's incredible isn't this it is like a Sorry about last time, <laughs> here you go. Yeah, we've dropped down now to head back up to Green Gable. Yep. Let's go. Actually, Brand Drift is really interesting because it's like a, it's like a triangle. And because of that, it is the only fell in the Lake District that feeds Ennerdale, Buttermere and Derwent water. Oh, wow because of its weird planes of... The way it all comes yeah, together. Yeah, that's why I think it's a lovely mountain. Sweet. It's not, it's not very, um, you know, people don't go on about it a lot. Yeah, you, don't, you don't, don't hear its name no, mentioned often, do you? It's, so, it's such an interesting mountain. It's an unsung hero. It is, it is an unsung hero, I think it's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it. Look at this down And now, there. yeah, now the path opening up in front wow. of us. So we've got to drop down, unfortunately, yeah. to go back up again. But yeah, you get these little tarns in the centre. So with sweet little tarns on the right hand side. We're now going to take the big pull up to uh, Green Gable. <laughs> Lots of little way markers to keep you from danger because there are a couple of drop offs. So just keep following them. Keep going up and up. Forevermore! Plenty hot, keeping the water going in lots of little sips. Oh, I'm keeping that moomin hydrated up there. Looking back on the route that we've just walked, already you can see the mileage that we've, we've gobbled up. But there's uh, still some more miles to come, boo, isn't there? <laughs> yep. A bit of scrambling ahead of us as we come through Windy Gap and up to the gable. But first things first, green gable and a cup of tea. Lovely. I think we can see the summit of Green Gable just up there now. So we are getting closer. Final, final push up to Green Gable now. This last kind of corridor of cans leading the way. Looking glorious against the blue horizon. Ding dong. At, at 801 meters, this is Green Gable. Our third Wainwright of the day, 
on what will definitely be a pit stop. Views down and over the smugglers path that will take you back. It'll be our path, you can just see it cutting through there, that white. There's a nice little storm shelter up here, so we're just gonna tuck ourselves in that a moment, recharge before we have to drop back down into the windy gap, yeah. and then back up Great Gable for our highest point of the day and some of the best views in Lakeland. Great Gable itself is, is one of the most popular mountains in the Lake District. Scramblers, yeah. proper mountaineering, climbing, yeah. hill walkers, hikers, you name it. Like it practically gives you everything. Yeah. So for whatever sort of thing you're into, it, it can do. It's a box ticker. Second thoughts, the, uh, so the windbreak here is full of midges. So we're just gonna go and sit just in from the ledge a little bit. Cats found me a little boulder stone. From a beautiful, very hot green gable. Skull. Mm -hmm. That is still boiling hot. That's actually burned all the I way I was gonna down. say, it's one of those days today yeah. where the, the tea seems to be getting hotter, hotter as we walk along. I think it might be reboiling. <laughs> yeah, it could be, it could be. Absolutely, it's the most idyllic view up here. Yeah, we couldn't have asked for better weather. Wow, yeah, so over our shoulder we have Wasdale, uh, Scaffold Pike and yep. other mountains in that range, but we'll show you those more from the top of Great Gable. Scaffell just there, and you'll always know it because it's got a big sort of nipple on it's top. Got, yeah, it's got the big stones, or you've, yeah. got the, you've got the trig point, and then you have like a big strone can on top where people yeah. like to stand and get photos. Yeah. And in the highest point in England, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Down there, some of that, uh, that is used for rock climbing, is called Gable Crags, and it was actually used to keep smuggled items in, those little crags. Recharged, we've had our tea, had some stem ginger and some sunflower seeds. We're now ready to power on, aren't we? How hydrated are you? I'm about this much hydrated. About hydrated. And this much just is sweaty warmth. Okay, okay, that's good. Good level of hydration, adequate. Are you sure? Sweat to hydration levels, yeah. <laughs> now we have to drop down into Windy Gap, which is um, down there, bing. Ooh, that man's enjoying a bit of Windy Gappage. And then we have to go up here, uh, there's a bit more behind it. This is a bit scrambly, so you do have to use your hands occasionally on here. And it is a little bit shingly, so it's not going to be the easiest, but um, it should be good fun. Until we get to the top of Great Gable and those wonderful views over Wasdale. So descending Gable, you have to be a little bit careful. It isn't the uh, best. A uh, little bit slippery. The stones are a bit marbly. And it's quite a steep drop. People have sort of created their own zigzag down to make it less uh, dodgy. Kerry. Coming down to his windy gap. <laughs> Childish. Windy gap. Windy gap. Now we start the climb up to Great Gable. I'm both nervous and excited. Times like these, I like Cat to be in front. She picks the safest route for me. Yep. She knows what I can and can't do as much as I do. That bit's fine. Absolutely excellent. Well done. Very good. I shall move round here and you can stand on. This area, it's oh, quite lovely. good. Maybe just a touch more scramble there, yeah. but it's not bad. Okay. It's not bad. So as you can see, some of the worst hands-on stuff wasn't too bad. Almost like giant steps, really. You just have to heave yourself over a little bit. It's not difficult by any by any means. I, I would call it a very simple, short scramble, really. Not too difficult at all. You see by the nature of the geology here that it's a bit indistinct just follow the little cans and really you can't go too wrong as long as you're 
feeling sure-footed enough and there's some rubbed in paths here and there just get up in it and a carriage get up just get up <laughs> that was the uh the, the catchphrase that finished second to the just do it yeah <laughs> nike almost took it from me could have been a billionaire and then here back out on the paths again now following the cans up might be a little bit more feet and hand stuff towards the top yeah, I think it's just a little bit marbly really up the top bit. It's just yeah. where it's broken away and become loose, but it's not too bad now. Not too bad at all. So we've got about another 75 meters of vertical climbing to do before we can get you to the summit. Lots of little people down on Green Gable now. Can't see the gap, unfortunately, because it's that sheer over the edge we've just come up over yeah as we turn you around now you can see it opens up onto this moonscape and take you up to the summit point our highest point of the day this is the false summit. this is what we were looking at earlier yeah, you've got to keep going. from down on green gable so you've got, got, to keep going. got to keep going folks beautiful so the true summit of great gable now in sight just a few more meters and we'll be there you'll be there too so come on keep on going oh don't you be putting that kettle on just yet. You've got to wait for us to pop open our teas and we'll have a little skull together on the top of Great Gable. At 899 meters, this is Great Gable. Unbelievable. Incredible, isn't it? This scar fell directly there. Highest point in England in the Lake yep. District. It's looking out over Wass Water, the deepest lake in all of the Lake District. Yes, divers. It's a diver's paradise. That divers way. up onto the, the scaffolds. Scaffold Pike there in the middle. Looking back over the, the rest of the Lake District here. Look at this. Helvellyn, then Catherine, Skidor, and everything else beyond. You're running off for tea, Kerry. Someone said something about fell running and tea. <laughs> Signed up, I'm off. So Great Gable, not just absolutely beautiful, but also a very poignant place and this plaque will tell you. So this whole mountain and the, the surrounding area was actually brought up by the Fell and Rock Climbing Club to commemorate those people um, that died in World War I. Quite magnificently gave it all to the National Trust so that this place could be enjoyed by everyone forever. So that's a really beautiful thing and they make a pilgrimage to this plaque every single year. So we're just going to stop for our second final cup of tea of the day just off the summit of great gable just over my shoulder there and soak up some of these views spectacular could yeah absolutely breathtaking isn't it um, just a little note that this is quite unusual to be this empty yeah it's normally quite a busy peak and the fact that a local just said oh i've never ever seen in all these days seen it this empty so um it, it you know, there's multiple reasons for that, but it's um, it's amazing to have this sun and have these views and be so alone. Yeah, it is amazing. Complete isolation. Yeah, I feel really, really lucky. Privilege, isn't it? Yeah, privilege. Looking up over our shoulder here as well, you can just about see the silhouette of the Isle of Man on the horizon there. And then back over this way, we have Scotland. Oh down there in the blue bag it's my cup of tea <laughs> from the summit of great gable in the lake district Skull. skull
leaving our tea spot behind now as we pick up the cans we start to work our way down the opposite side of Great Gable. Yes, yeah, so you're actually heading and try and keep heading northwest. Yep. Be careful because you can accidentally get onto the scree. And you want to avoid that. Yeah. So take your time, follow your maps, follow your apps, whatever you find best, and uh, descend safely. Come on then, nerd. Best of you, a vast water down through here. You can see the length. Obviously you can't see the depth, but it is the deepest lake in the in the Lake District. This cat negotiates our way down now as we descend Great Gable. Gotta be dead careful, it's a bit of an ankle twister down here. Peek. <laughs> it's so loose, it's so damn loose everywhere. So steep. Yeah. The, the camera's really doing justice, but I nah. promise you. So we've just kind of made it around that area that Cat showed you. It's deviated off the path. We're just keeping on that bearing that Cat was mentioning at the top. Really not a nice way off this uh, this this side. I think I'd <laughs> rather have gone back over. When you oh, get no, no, I don't know. I think it's good to push yourself, isn't it? I just feel a bit tired, but I'll be really chuffed with this later on, I'm sure. Um, and the path does look to be getting a bit gentler in a minute, so I might be able to get a bit more air back. Another 60 meters or so, and we'll crack open a, a fizzy tonic water in celebration. Over my shoulder there you can see great gable and we've just managed to scramble our way down and i will it was scrambling our way down yeah. vertical in places pretty exposed and i feel quite joyous to be here now in the booby having a little tonic water before we take you off onto moses trod the smuggler's path Oh, look at this as well now as we drop down onto the smuggler's path. Absolutely spectacular. Looking back up at Great Gable and Green Gable and then the path lays ahead of us. And Kat will give you all the info on that in a minute. Once we get down off this little bit here, we'll tell you all about it. It's the Moses Trud path we're currently on. Yes. Yeah, and okay. that's named after someone called Moses Riggs. And he devised this path to take slate from the slate mine um, across here, over there, and then down to Wasdale. Okay. Um, and from there, you could go off to the port of Ravenglass. He was a wily quarryman. Yeah. And what he decided to do is start smuggling his own whiskey. Oh. And this buttress here is about midway up this buttress. There's a little, almost like a hut or a, a cabin sort of thing. Yeah. And climbers call that the um, smuggler's retreat, and that is where he used to hide his smuggled goods. Sneaky. So this was actually a cartway. You, you could actually pull it along. Oh, wow, like okay. Cartway, yeah. Pull all your slate and yes. everything else along, and he'd be tucked in his bottles of whiskey and contraband. Yeah. And then hiding it up in the buttress there. You yeah. can see it is visible to the naked eye. If you are walking this path, well worth stopping and trying to see whether you can spot it too. Moses Trod, Smuggler's Path, clear as day in front of you here. Easy to follow, nice gentle on the feet. Just what you need after a, the morning we've had. Real sense of accomplishment and pride in, in today's climbing. Been a real, real treat. Feel the rucksack getting lighter as the day progresses. We've now guzzled our two teas. The tonic water is toast and 
the H2O is starting to dwindle. We have got more spare water back at the car. I think we packed just about right for today, to be honest with you. Lots of little sips, keep you hydrated as you go along. Save you getting in a pickle. Starting to see some of the slate works and things come back into sight now on the horizon. So it means we're getting closer on us to pass. What a great day. All the details of today's walk, where we parked, how long it took, all that kind of stuff will be down in the description that Cat will put together for you. So yes, please give it a thumbs up. Tickle that like button, there's a good to go. Haystacks there, look. Buttermere, Cromic Water again. Last views as we sort of drop back down towards the, the Honister Pass. Just soaking it all in. We have actually uh, kayaked on Buttermere as well, which is another video well worth having a look at. It's very good. So this last final bit back down to the Honister Slate Mine and the Honister Pass, quite busy. It's quite a, a popular juncture for Fleetworth and Haystacks and all the other Wainwrights in the area. Uh, we've just gone past a, a, a school load of uh, kiddies, which is nice to see. Um, and we're really just on this final push now to get you home. So we're very nearly back at the Honister Slate Mine now. Yeah. So we're gonna sign off here. Um, as we've just taken the, the last sort of mile and a quarter. We'll basically meet the miner's path, like a miner's road, yep. and then just walk down and that'll be the car park. Excellent. Uh, all the details of today's walk, Kat will put down in the description, um, how long it's been, um, time-wise, mile-wise, yeah. uh, everything else like that, the heights of all the mountains and, and everything. Um, we've had a brilliant day. It's been absolutely special, privileged, spectacular to be here today. Great perfect. gable, yeah, perfect views all around us, all into the lakes. Um, yeah, so we hope you've enjoyed it too. If you have, please Bing bong. tickle that like button. Any questions, drop us a comment down below. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Smash. I've been checking those figures and apparently there's somebody out there that hasn't subscribed. Who was it? So if you do subscribe, click the bell notification so you know when we upload new videos. It'd be wise of you. Yes, until our next adventure, stay safe and well. And keep enjoying those green spaces. You take care. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye.